Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to set up an Android phone for use as an IP security camera. You can use it for monitoring your pets or your home. I currently use it to watch my balcony pond. I find watching fish really calming and this allows me to view them at work or from my desk when I'm at home. You can use it to monitor anything you want, granted you have access to your home network when you're away. So what you'll need is an Android smartphone, a mount, and an application from the Google Play Store called IP Webcam. There is a pro version without any ads and there's also a free version as well that works pretty good but you have to deal with ads. So pretty much any smartphone should work so it's best to find one that you're not using that's kicking around or buying an inexpensive one. Since all smartphones have Wi-Fi, there is no need for a wired connection. You'll need to keep it powered via a USB cable though if you plan on having it run all day. If you don't already have an Android phone, most Android phones can be bought for under $100 and it should do the job. Check out the description for smartphones I recommend if you don't already have one. So for my balcony pond, this is how I mounted it to the uh, pond. I use this uh, flexible mount that I got off Amazon and it allows me to basically mount uh, my camera any way I want. And I also power it with a USB cable so that I can have it running 24 hours a day. And this is what it looks like after I have it hooked up. And it's connected via Wi-Fi and it's constantly streaming the videos feed to the um, iVideon website so I can view it when I'm not at home. And locally, I can access it through the local IP address in, um, on my network. So after getting your phone and your mount, the next thing you wanna do is download the IP webcam app from the Play Store. There is a free version and a pro version, like I said, and I think the pro version is only about $4, so it's definitely worth it if you plan on using this. This is by far the best application for the job. There are so many features to name, but I'll only show you the ones that I use most of the time. It'll record and stream your videos over Wi-Fi for local viewing. It can even do cycled or loop recording, so when the storage fills up, it'll just overwrite the older video. After installing the application, there's basically only a couple of settings you need to change. Go into local broadcasting and we want to set the login password so that only you can access that. So you can put whatever you want in terms of a login name, maybe put in uh, admin or your first name. After setting the login and password, you'll need to enter this every time you want to access your cameras either through the web UI or the RTSP um, URL. And that's all you pretty much need to set for local broadcasting. And if you wanna be able to access your video streams online anywhere in the world, you'll wanna set up cloud streaming by clicking cloud streaming and then it should allow you to download the codecs for it. So click yes to proceed with the download. And after downloading the video codec, you can set up an account with iVideon, which is free. It will basically connect to your cameras and allow you to stream them from anywhere in the world using their web web application or their um, applications for iOS and Android. So when you use iVideon, you don't have to deal with uh, opening up ports on your firewall or router. It just works uh, seamlessly through the firewall. I also check off the stream on device boot and once you click start server, it will begin to stream your video over the internet to iVideon as well as uh, locally broadcast it on your network. At the very bottom of the screen, you'll see the IP address of this Android smartphone and you'll need that to connect to the phone to view the stream. So you can use a standard RTSP client to view the video stream like VLC and those are the URLs. You can also use um, iVideon as well as connect connecting directly using a web browser. So I'll show you how to do that in the next section. So here I've downloaded the iVideon application on my iPhone and I've already added the cameras. The minute you log in with the IP webcam app, it will add the cameras into your profile. And these are the two cameras that I have. And all you have to do now is just click on one of the icons there and it should allow you to start streaming from it. Like I said, you don't really have to do any port forwarding or opening up any ports on your firewall if you're using the iVideon app and you can be anywhere in the world and have access to the video feed as long as you have a network connection because your Android phone is constantly streaming the video up to the cloud and then you're viewing it from the cloud anywhere in the world where you have data access. So you can use pretty much any RTSP client to view the streams locally. So I'm using a my GPD XD and an application called IP Webcam Viewer Basic. It's like a free version 
And as you can see, I can look at both the streams locally on my GPDXD and most RTSP clients will require the IP, the port number, and the password and username that you set up in uh, IP webcam. And you can also use VLC media player as well. As long as you know the RTSP URL, you can add that to VLC. And then what you can do is just view it from your desktop. So this is the RTSP link that I got of the IP webcam application. So you're seeing a live view of the pond right now. I also access it on my big screen TV by using Kodi and plugging in the RTSP URL. Access the web UI of the smartphone that you're streaming from by going to the URL and uh, typing the address there, which is the local IP and port 8080. And from here, you can see some controls like, for example, you can view the actual live feed from it. All you have to do is select browser and you'll see a live view of the webcam. And here you can start recording it manually or start a uh, cycled or loop recording just by clicking the button here. Or you can take a snapshot. So you can take a snapshot. That's it right there. And we'll go back here. And you can also zoom. The zoom works pretty well, just like as if you were at the camera itself. So if you were to zoom it, it also works. And um, you can also set things like the stream call quality. I usually leave it at 50%. It works pretty well. And you can essentially focus the camera as well as uh, turn on the LED. So I just turned it on here, as you can see. But it's already got light, so you can't really tell that the LED is on but it works really well when it's dark out and when I turn on the LED I can actually see the fish when it's pitch dark and you can also switch from the front cam to the reverse cam so here the uh, front cam is basically pointing up at the sky so all you're really seeing is my ceiling and we're gonna flip that back and that's pretty much all the settings that I use. There are a bunch of other settings for motion detection and stuff like that, but I don't really touch any of this stuff because the default settings work pretty well. And there are basically from here, the video archive, this is where you access all the files that you've uh, recorded. So you can just click on it and go right click and download. So that's pretty much it in terms of using your smartphone as an IP webcam for monitoring your pets or your home. I hope you found this video useful. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, comment, like, share, or subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.